Okay, this video is going to explain uh, where the chemtrail spider webs are coming from, uh, what they do to the environment, and why they're actually being created. Uh, French scientists and some testing I've done has shown that they are actually phthalates, which is a molecule that looks like this. These are all phthalates. You notice that they have a, uh, a benzene ring at one end, then a couple of long carbon chains with some oxygens off the side and methyl groups. So it's when these side chains get very long they're able to polymerize and actually create a false spider web. So why is this program in existence? Phthalates block ultraviolet better than any other organic acid that is uh, normally floating around in the atmosphere. How are they doing it? The phthalates are formed in the cooling jet exhaust due to a vanadium catalyst in the jet fuel. Where is it being done? Over my location, for one place, to prevent myself measuring high ultraviolet B again. And I would note these are tentative answers from initial research done by me, the HARP report. Now we ask the question, why is it being done? The following 2004 research paper from Norway shows phthalic acid is better at absorbing harmful ultraviolet than any other organic acid. <clears throat> uh, optical properties in the ultraviolet and visible spectrum region of the organic acids relevant to trop tropospheric aerosols. So if we look into the text we see it's actually about phthalic acid. This is the number one draft pick of all these uh, chemicals floating around in the atmosphere for blocking ultraviolet. Here we have a graph showing the absorption of different of these uh, common acids floating around. Here's the ultraviolet, dangerous ultraviolet B region. Most tropospheric organic acids do not absorb any ultraviolet as shown by this hump in the infrared. Only oxalic and pyruvic acids absorb ultraviolet. Phthalic acid is not shown because it would literally be off the chart. Here's an absorption spectra of selected organic acids, uh, namely benzoic, phthalic, and oxalic acid. Again, here's our harmful ultraviolet B area. Phthalic acid absorbs more ultraviolet at one-third of the concentration of oxalic acid. Phthalic acid is the best choice for an airborne trace chemical which absorbs harmful ultraviolet. <clears throat> this classified program is being done to create a small amount of extra ultraviolet protection. Here in this, uh, here's 250 nanometer germicidal ultraviolet which breaks uh, DNA in seconds and up to uh, ultraviolet A which starts about 315. So it's this small hump in this dashed line right here that is the whole reason for this program. And it absorbance is maximum about 0.5 here. So not much protection is the reason for this whole program. To repeat for clarity, phthalic acid is the best choice for an airborne trace chemical to deliberately absorb harmful ultraviolet. How do they do it? Uh, trace metal impurities in jet fuels. Crude oil typically contains small quantities of vanadium as a naturally occurring component of the petroleum. During normal jet engine operation, vanadium pentoxide, V2O5, is produced in the jet exhaust. Vanadium pentoxide, V2O5, is the same exact catalyst which is used to convert naphthalene into phthalic anhydride at industrial chemical plants. Naphthalene is a main component of jet fuel, and actually a contaminant, making up several percent of typical crude oils. This is a smoking gun. Here's a fuel analysis showing the naphthalene content of jet fuel A, which is commercial airliner jet fuel, and JP5, which is military uh, jet fuel. <clears throat> you can see the JP Jet A is uh, 1206 micrograms per milliliter. 
So there's a significant amount of uh, naphthalene in normal jet fuel. Uh, phthalic anhydride is produced in the jet exhaust and it's produced by catalytic oxidation of naphthalene over a vanadium pentoxide uh, catalyst between 320 and 400 centigrade. And these are the same temperatures that exist in a jet engine. Okay, so enthalic acid, which is the end product which we, are, which we desire to have, or they desire, is produced by catalytic oxidation and hydrolysis of the anhydride. Hydrolysis just means you expose it to water. The reaction, uh, to, to uh, review again, the reaction is catalyzed by vanadium pentoxide, V2O5, between 320 and 400 centigrade. To quote an industry document, the reaction stream of oxylene and air mixture enters the packed bed reactor at a temperature of 300 to 420 C and a pressure slightly less than one atmosphere. Well, guess where those conditions exist? Those temperatures and low pressures exist in the exhaust stream of a jet engine. Uh, phthalic anhydride sublimes, or turns directly from a gas into a solid, as it cools in the jet exhaust. So those fibers, the, the spider webs, can begin forming immediately as this stuff cools in the jet stream, jet exhaust. Later, the phthalates string together due to weak hydrogen bonding, forming long nanofibers, which resemble spider webs. What does this chemical reaction look like inside the jet's jet engine and in the exhaust stream of the jet? First, we start with jet fuel, which contains naphthalene and a vanadium impurity. As it burns, the vanadium is turned into vanadium pentoxide, which is the catalyst. It's added to the naphthalene and oxygen in the air and in the fuel, producing phthalic anhydride. And this is well known, a very common uh, industrial chemical reaction. You add that to water or steam in the jet exhaust, and the hydrolysis produces phthalic acid and other phthalates and some benzene ring compounds. With time and ultraviolet ionization, hydrogen bonding causes polymerization into long phthalate fibers which resemble cobwebs and then fall to the earth. So to summarize, jet fuels high in vanadium plus modifications to the jet engine, the jet engine software, the diffuser, etc. equals a covert sunscreen screen program with also toxic chemicals falling from the sky disguised as spider webs. Where is this happening? Since I have the meters to test for ultraviolet B and I'm most likely to test for UV on a clear weekend, the sunscreen was sprayed over my area during three clear weekends in November and December 2015. See the Harp Report videos of falling spider webs to see some really dramatic uh, shots of these webs falling. This is just a guesstimate on my part, but it fits the overall pattern. Why should you care about phthalates falling from the sky? Maternal exposure to phthalates during pregnancy is linked to lower IQ in kids. You should stay away from plastics and scented products as much as possible because they're loaded with phthalates. Association between pregnancy loss or miscarriage and urinary phthalate levels around the time of conception. In other words, women that have uh, phthalates in their bloodstream are going to miscarry. Vinyl flooring and phthalates linked to autism in new study. So it's just a broad spectrum of illness and hormone disruption that happens. Phthalates are much worse for aquatic life than for humans. <clears throat> Phthalates bioconcentrate in plankton and fish, and they have no way to remove them. The fish or the aquatic life don't, so they die. Here's a uh, bioconcentration measurement of aquatic life, and you can see uh, algae here in the lower half bioconcentrates these phthalates 3,000 times. Very odd looking measurement. But the, the lower 
the lower, more primitive animals don't have a way to detoxify the way mammals do. 50% of marine plankton dies in 96 hours, and these are marine copepods, uh, the base of the plankton food chain. And again, these, these copepods, 96 hour uh, lethal time period. At water flea, Daphnia, in an incredibly low concentration, 1.82 micrograms per liter, half of them die in 96 hours. Without plankton, the Pacific ecosystem is collapsing. The Pacific Ocean is dying. Alaska Dispatch News, scientists think Gulf of Alaska seabird die-off is biggest ever recorded. Scientists uh, speculate and the birds are in a desperate quest to find food. The seabird die-off is possibly due to shortages of squid, krill, and little fish the birds usually eat. <clears throat> so it's my belief, and I have a great deal of uh, uh, experience to back this up, the secret ionospheric heaters are blasting holes in the ozone layer every day. As a cover for the ionospheric heater's secret weather warfare, the chemtrail aerosols are poisoning the planet with phthalates to hide the, ex the uh, excess ultraviolet levels. The secrecy behind the sunscreen program is an indication of how desperate the global situation is, as long as the ionospheric heaters continue to run. Military commanders all over the world must stop the operation of all ionospheric heaters and declassify the chemtrail aerosol program so it can be evaluated by the best scientists. Thank you for watching. Please spread the word. This is another world-changing video like the chemtrails or coal ash video from the Harp Report. And uh, other people watched the Stupid Bowl, uh, sorry, Super Bowl. I made a video instead. Not bad work for a few hours on a Sunday, eh? Thank you for watching.